This is Jay again with Second Round Fitness Guys. We're going to be going over a dissecting another exercise, another strength based exercise. Today we're going to go over showing you a barbell bent over row. I'm going to show you the pronated version, which is just really different in the hand placement and the active muscles being used in the back. Both freaking excellent for building strength, girth to the lats, to terrace major, just the back in general. Excellent move. But in a few other videos, we were really dissecting the hip hinge. Now, again, even very similarly with the barbell row, you are using a hinge to pick up the bar and maintain position while you're bent over for the row. Um, I've had a few people, all different really types of facets and genres of fitness, whether it's bodybuilding, uh, usually not too much CrossFit or Olympic weightlifting. Uh, they aren't too big on bent over rows or pulling from a midline, but they're excellent lifts. Now, what I've noticed when people do this is they're bent all at the spine. So if we think about the spine and all the vertebrae and the way they stack and things like that. If you bend yourself and you flex that spine or overtly round the shoulder blades and the thoracic spine, all you're doing is creating sheer forces on each one of those vertebrae. Generally, always the lumbar spine and those five right there where they start at the hip and then they turn into the thoracic spine. You don't want that. You want the trunk and the spine. Your lumbar spine is part of your trunk, the lumbar pelvic hip complex. You want all of that to be braced and stable for the weight you're about to move. Even though you're working your lats, you want a strong trunk. That's where your whole body connects and transmits energy from the core to the extremities and the legs and the arms and everything else. So again, I always love to take them from the rack. I favor taking the barbell row from the rack because it always have to be done that way. But for today's video, we're going to show you how to do that one. Walk up to the bar just the same way I did any of the rack pulls or the RDLs or most of the deadlifts. Hinge the hip, grabbing the bar slightly wider than your thighs. I usually favor like a nice fat finger inside the first gnarling. Grab the bar, set it, and I use my glutes to pick it up. My normal three-step rule. I'm going to hinge until I get in that RDL pattern where the bar was right below my knees. Then with the shoulder blades and lats, initiate by pulling the bar to your upper abdominal area. Lower it back down. Pull to the upper abdominal area. Lower it back down. Squeeze the glutes to stand up. Walk back in. Use the legs to put it down. Now, with this, focus on full retraction of the shoulder blades. Focus on engagement, not just of the lats, but traps, rumboids, all that. Initiate the pull from the shoulder blades first instead of from the elbow. So what I mean by that, excuse me, burp. So what I mean by that, if you are in the bent over position and your shoulder blades don't even engage, so they don't retract, and you start pulling from the elbow, you just turn that whole lift into an elbow dominant lift. Your bicep is going to be the functional agonist that it's vastly weaker than any one of your back muscles. We're not trying to do that with this. We're trying to work with that. Okay? Now, further from there, it's, it's improper movement at that point. So you're just adding to the cumulative injury cycle. We don't want that. Cumulative injury cycle is what gets athletes to average gym go and things like that in front of physical therapists, OTs, corrective exercise with injuries. The idea is to exercise for health not for injury. So again, this is Jay with Second Round Fitness. Come check us out for any strength and conditioning you need. We're a strength and performance mobility-based gym. Check us out, YouTube, any other social media. God bless, guys.